Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about remote debugging using Visual Studio 2017. The items we're going to touch on are deployment of a sample application using Visual Studio 2017. We're going to install the latest version of .NET Core for the application that we're going to be deploying. We're going to enable remote debugging by installing remote debugging tools on that machine. And we're going to connect to that remote server using Visual Studio 2017 debugging process. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have is, uh, this is my development machine, and I have Visual Studio open here with my sample project that I'm going to be deploying. Now, before we do anything with this, I first want to make sure that I set up my uh, remote server with the uh, tools that I need in order to be able to complete this task. So this server has been set up uh, with IS itself. So I'll open up uh, the management studio for IS. And in here, you can see that there's a default website. I can browse to that website, and there's no content uh, hosted on this server yet. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and install what's called a MS Deploy uh, tool or Web Deploy. And it's going to be used for us to be able to remotely deploy an application to the server by clicking a Publish button in Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and search for MS Deploy. And uh, the first link comes up is the web deployment 3.6. I'll go ahead and choose that. And I'll go ahead and uh, use that option to go ahead and install it. So click download. Choose the version uh, that you need for your operating system. And go ahead and hit next. It will ask me to make sure that I allow pop-ups. And I'll go ahead and hit run here. Click next. And I'm going to choose complete because we need that in order to be able to fully support the full deployment scenario that we need from Visual Studio. So the installation process is completed. And the next item that I need to also make sure is, since this is a ASP.NET Core MVC application, I actually need to make sure that I have the latest version of ASP.NET Core installed as well as .NET Core installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and search for .NET Core downloads. So the first thing that comes up is getting started with .NET. I'm going to go ahead and actually click the downloads option here. and I need .NET Core, and I'm going to go ahead and choose the runtime option, and uh, I'm going to select this 64-bit uh, installer, ex um, runtime executable itself. So I'll go ahead and hit run, and the current version that um, they have published is 1.1.2. Go ahead and, uh, and agree to the options, or to the uh, agreement from Microsoft, and hit next. And this is going to deploy um, all of the re required components for me and we'll be able to validate and make sure that we have um, the version installed. So I'll go ahead and open up uh, the command prompt here and I'll just now type in .NET and this should make sure that I actually have .NET installed now. So you can see that the version that it's showing me is 1.1.0. It, it is actually 1.1.2. Um, so everything looks like it should be ready. Um, the next item that we also want to make sure is because this is a, a, a plain install or a fresh install of um, IAS on this machine, we also need to make sure that in order to facilitate the .NET Core application to be running on IAS, we need to install the um, ASP.NET Core um, hosting bundle. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's take a look. Um, actually, and uh, using this link right here, um, there's actually a, a link to ASP.NET Core server hosting bundle. And um, we can go ahead and hit run here.
and this is actually required because um, it allows us to have uh, IES to be able to interact with the .NET process itself and it set, sets up for the entire uh, management module because uh, ASP.NET Core itself re requires a different uh, hosting mechanism. It actually uses a, a Kestrel web server to do all the compilation of the different components um, and then IES is act acting as a proxy server. So now that we have that installed, um, IES should be able to host that uh, application for us. So now that we have all these components installed, we should be able to go ahead and go back to Visual Studio. And in here, what I want to do is I want to right click and click publish. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click create new profile and choose IES FTP. And the publishing mechanism is going to be web deploy. And I'm going to go ahead and specify the actual server name that I'm going to be deploying to and I'm going to specify the web application or the path in IES where this application is going to be deployed to and I'm going to go ahead and call it default website slash contacts. A default website is something that already exists and slash contacts is something that is going to go ahead and create since it doesn't exist yet. I'm going to go ahead and provide my domain credentials. Click save. And the destination URL is going to be the URL that is going to be used uh, to launch the web browser every time I publish to validate that everything is working. So I'll go ahead and click validate. And you can see that the uh, connection has been validated successfully. I'll go ahead and hit next. And for configuration, I'm going to choose debug because that's the goal of this video is to be able to show you that we can actually debug the application. If you do release, you will not be able to actually do the debugging aspect. Go ahead and hit save. And now we should be able to publish the application and um, validate that we can actually access it as well. So um, here you can see that we actually received an error. And the reason for this error is because um, IES actually needs to be able to recycle after we did all those steps of installing all the different components. So let me go ahead and open up the command prompt. And I'll issue the IES reset command. And let's go back here and go ahead and refresh. So as you can see, the application loaded. And uh, we should be able to actually see the details. Uh, I'll be able to click Edit and navigate the application. Now, um, the last piece of the puzzle here is we want to be able to actually attach to that application and be able to actually debug um, the specific uh, method that uh, we're interested in. So in this particular case, I want to be able to actually debug when a user clicks on the details of a person record. And I'll go ahead and put a breakpoint here. But uh, in order for this to work, I actually need to also attach. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click attach to process. And what you'll notice here is it says connection target. Now what I need to be able to do is specify remote dev. And if I press enter, you'll notice that it complains saying that uh, it's unable to connect. And the reason for that is because there's actually no debugging tools installed on the server. And that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and search for remote debugging tools 2017. And you'll notice that uh, there's a remote debugging uh, article that's published. And I'll click on that. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that uh, there's a link to remote tools. And actually, there should be a, a version of that for 2017. And you can see uh, actually it's right here. So if I click remote tools, it's going to take me to the Visual Studio downloads and automatically take me to the uh, Visual Studio 2017 version of that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 64-bit um, edition and hit download and go ahead and click run here. And let's wait for it to download and we'll take it from there.
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, agree to the uh, licensing terms and hit install. And it should be as simple as that. So once the install completes, we should be able to go ahead and start uh, the remote debugging tool console on this server. And we should also be able to then connect from our Visual Studio instance to the server directly. Um, what's also important to know is you can also run this as a service so you don't have to actually start it up manually and you can actually run it through command line and specify the account you want to be able to use. So there's different options that you have available to you. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it um, as a simple um, Windows UI tool and I'll run it as administrator because it, it will be able to do certain things um, and see certain other processes that if you run it as a normal user account uh, it might not be able to see. So, And one of the things you'll notice is it also tries to make sure that uh, you have the API available um, for other uh, endpoints just like Visual Studio to be able to actually attach to this process as well as making sure that your firewall is configured appropriately to allow this communication. So. Here we're basically telling it to go ahead and configure the remote debugging uh, through firewall. So click configure and it started up. Now if you go to tools and you go to options, this is where you can change your authentication mechanism. You can grant certain accounts access or you can choose the no authentication option um, if that's what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue using Windows authentication and I'll go back to Visual Studio, hit OK here and I'll just uh, go ahead and press enter once again and you can see that everything actually started up. Now what I do want to uh, make sure that I have is the ability for me to find the actual process here. So what what I'm looking for since this is a .NET Core application is I'm actually looking for a process with the name of .NET. And one thing you'll notice is that it actually doesn't exist here. The reason for that is because um, since I haven't been using this application and plus I've been installing different components it actually shut down that instance of the .NET process. So all I really need to do is I'll just navigate to that application again. You can see it takes uh, you know, a couple of seconds for it to actually do that. And I can navigate now to the people screen. And I'll go ahead and refresh this by pressing enter once again in the screen. And um, it automatically tried to attach to this process. So I don't want to do that here. I'll click don't attach. Um, let me actually go back to the screen and um, it actually refreshed all the processes on this machine and now I'm looking for that .NET process. So you can see it actually shows up right here and I'll go ahead and attach to that process because I know that's the process that the application is actually running under is the .NET uh, executable. So I'll go ahead and um, attach and you can also see that um, now Visual Studio is actually connected to it. If it wasn't able to attach properly, you would actually see a different type of a circle here that would indicate that it couldn't actually resolve any of the debugging symbols. But because in my case it actually succeeded, um, everything looks good. I should be able to go ahead and navigate to the details screen for any of these users so by clicking details. And you can see in background Visual Studio actually was able to intercept that call. And now I'm actually debugging from one computer um, and attaching to another computer and seeing exactly what's happening on that other computer. So you can see that the ID got passed in. If I actually go ahead and step through the process, I can actually see that the database record was being returned and um, it actually returns back to the view. So I can go ahead and run this and um, it goes back to the application and then you can do whatever else you, you were looking to do. So this is basically uh, the basics of how to actually set up remote debugging so that you don't have to actually debug only in your computer. So this is useful when you're doing debugging of applications that are hosted in your dev environment so you can validate certain scenarios uh, if that only occurs on that computer. Also is a good way for you to be able to host applications on a different server, maybe in Azure um, and not having another computer in that remote environment where you would have to install all of your uh, development tools. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave your comments below. If you like this video, uh, go ahead and subscribe and uh, leave feedback if you're interested in these kind of topics or if you want to see something else. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this and have a great day.